Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson. And we didn't get a lot of questions this week, so it'll be a smaller mailbag, but uh, sometimes we get 20, 25 questions. Sometimes we just get a handful. This week we had just a handful, but I'm going to dive right into them. First one comes from Nas Raider, who asks, what is your take on if the if any ACC teams end up in the Big 12? Well, I think it's possible. ACC looks to be... Uh, Perhaps the next conference on the chopping block. The Big 12 has been really aggressive in terms of adding schools, uh, most notably the Pac-12 schools. And uh, there are a lot of rumors or reports out there. Now, look, with uh, realignment, there are a number number of reports because it's clickbait gold. If you're like someone in my shoes, if you post something on realignment, you know you're going to get a lot of clicks, a lot of views. Now, I personally unless I feel really strongly about something, I'm not going to report that. And I'm not hating on anybody who does, but I'm just saying as a reader, for me as a sports fan and knowing what I know, I'm very cautious in terms of who's reporting it, uh, how it's being reported, what's being reported, of course, in terms of uh, conference realignment. But a lot's happened. I mean, it is more has changed, not just with conference realignment, but, uh, especially just with college athletics in general, um, with the rules, the way uh, it operates in the last five years than in the last 50. So I think it's definitely possible. I've heard Miami, NC State, Virginia Tech, all possible schools who could end up in the Big 12. Now they could just as easily end up in the SEC or maybe even the Big 10. So uh, that's something to monitor. My take is, yeah, I think it could happen. Um, I think, you know, that is a legitimate possibility. Now, I haven't heard, like, from a source saying, hey, this is likely to happen. Um, but I, I'm all for anything that legitimizes the Big 12 moving forward. And adding programs uh, like that, like Miami, NC State, Virginia Tech, would help legitimize the Big 12 in my eyes. There's also rumors that Texas Tech could be uh, one of the schools that would end up joining the SEC, when they look to add more schools and these big su- these big super conferences happen, because it does look like the Big Ten and SEC have been angling for quite some time now to become the two superpower conferences. Now, the Big 12 is trying to crash that party. How viable, how long will the Big 12 be viable in terms of having a seat at the big boy table? We'll have to see. But uh, it's definitely something to monitor. I think a lot of it's up in the air, to be honest. And I do think adding ACC teams is a possibility for the Big 12. Next question comes from TTU Braves Rock, who says, uh, what's your drink of choice this weekend? Well, I'm taping this on Friday after Texas Tech's lost Thursday night, so I'm going to say whiskey. I don't know if I'm going to be drinking a lot of whiskey this weekend necessarily, but, uh, uh, you know, another choice is, and, and TTU Braves Rock said his choice is carbonated water from his soda stream. Wow, fancy. Uh, with a wild sh- strawberry crystal light added to it. That sounds pretty fancy. Uh Along those lines of carbonated water, ranch water, you know, a little Topo Chico, throw some tequila in there, some lime. That's pretty good. It's kind of a refreshing drink, alternative, say, whiskey, if you're trying to uh, drown your sorrows. Next question comes from DL Vet, who wants to know, given that the Big 12 has a rep for being the best basketball conference, does a Big 12 team make it to the uh, national championship game? Well, I have Houston going at least to the Final Four. I can't remember if I had them – in the national championship or not. I have UConn defending their title and winning it all. Now, Houston won their first round game, so that's good. But I also think uh, Iowa State and Baylor both have chances. Iowa State has a lot of size, a lot of athleticism. They can really D up. Um, Houston, of course, I chose because of their defensive prowess. They're the best defensive team in the country, I believe. Um, and then Baylor, on the other end of it, uh, their offense and their athleticism, uh, all that, their uh, potential to be a, if they get hot offensively, uh, they can hang with anybody. They can beat anybody. So I think those three teams all have a chance of making it to the national championship, definitely the Final Four, and perhaps the national championship as well. Afros53 says he can't remember where it was posted, uh, but someone posted the baseball uh, team's ERA for the last four or five years, as, you know, something like that. He said he believes it's gone up something like a run a year over the last number of years. He says from what he could tell, a law is like a driving range. Does this affect pitcher recruiting? This is a great question. I don't cover baseball recruiting like I do football or basketball. Um, but, you know, it is a hitter's ballpark. There is no doubt. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily why we've seen 
Texas Tech's ERA going up every year. I, you know, right now Texas Tech is struggling overall as a team. It's not just the pitching, but certainly starting pitching hasn't been great um, at times. Uh, and then the pin hasn't been terrific either. You have a couple of guys who have done well in some spots, but Texas Tech is struggling overall. And, uh, you know, I do think um, there's a, there is something to the fact that, and this is unique because it's not like somebody might choose like a football program because it has a great atmosphere, but not necessarily the dimensions of the park and all that. So that is unique to baseball. And with the wind, the way it is, the wind blowing out a lot, um balls that would be normally just you know fly outs would in, you know end up being home runs if i'm a pitcher i mean i would think about that now a lot of these athletes are supremely confident so it's not like uh they're gonna let something like that necessarily stop them but do i think have there been some guy pitchers perhaps said you know what i don't think i want to go to texas tech because of the ballpark and the conditions and all that, certainly I think that's probably the case. I haven't spoken with someone who specifically said that, but um, all in, in recruiting, all these guys, individual recruitment is a thing onto itself. There are a couple of things that you could kind of bunch together and say like, I, you know, they want to go to a program where they, where they know they can win. They want to go to a program where they, they put people in the, in the pros, uh, that kind of thing. They want a, a good uh, fan base, but depending on what's the most important to each recruit. And sometimes it's something you can never consider, you know, every recruitment is different for every recruit, you know? So, um, I do think it plays a part, but I think the reason why the ERA has gone up every year is because the pitching, and then you got to look at the coaching perhaps, uh, may not be as good as it was before. They don't have the, the arms they did. Um, in those years, they, they went to the college world series and the coaching isn't developing some of those arms as well. I mean, you have to say that. So um, I do. While I do think it plays a part, I think it's like most things. It's not just one thing. I think there's several factors going into play to why uh, Texas Tech's uh, pitching staff their ERA has gone up every year. Well, like I said, it was a short bail bag this week. Not a lot of questions, though. I do appreciate these questions, and they were good questions. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.